Excellencies, High Commissioner Grandy, friends and colleagues. I want to thank UNHCR for the opportunity to contribute through this video message to the rich dialogue on protection challenges, a discussion important not only for the Global Compact on Refugees, but also for the upcoming negotiations on the Global Compact on Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration. Allow me to say a brief word on process before I turn to the Secretary General's report and the complementarity between the two compacts. The consultation phase of the Global Compact on Migration came to an end with the multi-stakeholder preparatory stock-taking meeting in Mexico that was held last week. The meeting provided a forum for UN member states, civil society and other stakeholders to review all the recommendations and data that were gathered during the first phase with the aim of advancing and informing the negotiations that will begin next year. Indeed, the Compact on Migration, unlike the Compact on Refugees, as you know, will be negotiated among states, and it is assumed that it will be legally non-binding. Its success will largely depend on the extent of the moral and political buy-in of the member states and the strong engagement of all stakeholders, non-governmental organizations, private sector, migrants themselves, and of course the United Nations system. The negotiation phase will start with a zero draft of the Global Compact on Migration that will be tabled at the end of January. The Secretary General will contribute to the zero draft through his report to be issued earlier in January. The Secretary General's input into the zero draft will highlight some of the key elements of effective migration management. So allow me to touch upon a few. First, it is widely accepted that migration is overwhelmingly a positive phenomenon. Well regulated, it is beneficial to states of origin and destination. However, we must recognize that it presents different opportunities and challenges to different states. All perspectives, whether focused on economic, human rights, developmental, social, or security factors, must be given due consideration as we develop a better way to manage migration. Second, addressing the challenges posed by irregular migration is essential, and this should be tackled in part by regularization efforts and an increase in legal pathways, and not by the criminalization and marginalization of the irregular migrants, who actually are often the first to suffer sometimes in unconscionable ways from their situation. Third, interstate linkages related to migration are inevitable. Given the far-reaching cross-border impact of migration trends and policies, no one state can successfully manage migration in isolation. It's a global phenomenon occurring within and between all regions, and this necessitates a collective collaborative approach. Fourth, to ensure the best outcome for migrants, communities, and states, our response must come from all levels, global, regional, national, and subnational. And here it must be said that cities and communities are often the greatest in innovators of solutions to overcome challenges and promote the benefits of migration. While the Secretary General's report is focused on international migration, it cannot lose sight of the complementarity between the two compacts. They must be mutually reinforcing, promoting, and protecting the human rights of all, regardless of their migratory status, given the many similar challenges faced in some circumstances by both migrants and refugees. In this current climate, characterized by a negative, if not actively hostile, narrative on migrants and sometimes on refugees, there's a need for strong leadership among member states to steer the public discourse towards credible facts and evidence and away from xenophobia and discrimination. There continues to be a pressing need for greater clarity on responding to large movements of migrants in vulnerable situations including those which may be caused in the future by natural disasters and climate change. 
The recent media reports related to migrants and refugees in insecure transit location and in detention centers are a stark example of why both compacts must insist on better reception for all persons, the swift identification and assistance to persons with specific needs and vulnerable individuals, especially children, the urgent need to pursue alternatives to detention in combating trafficking and smuggling. Effectively addressing these issues will go a long way to strengthening both the refugee response and the management of migration. In my view, well-managed, safe, orderly, and regular migration should result in greater respect for the principle of asylum and contribute to a more effective implementation of asylum regimes. As well, an increased variety of regular channels for migration, including labor and skill mobility schemes, will serve to reduce irregular migration and contribute to the overarching aim of the refugee compact. At the same time, greater international solidarity and more comprehensive responses to refugee movements will create a more receptive environment for all persons on the move. We have a common project. Much depends on our combined effort. I thank you very much for your kind attention.